Hey everybody, welcome to my video on imports and exports for an intro econ class. What we're going to do today is I'm going to introduce the idea of trade in a supply and demand graph. We'll show how to ice, how to identify imports and exports and also how to identify consumer and producer surplus. I will use that discussion to help explain why there's gains from trade with imports and exports. And that should wrap it up. Next video will be about quotas and tariffs and all that. So let's move and let's look at these markets. We have markets A and B, which are domestic economies, single countries, if you will. And we have on the far left, mark the world market. And the world market is going to be a combination of these two, com these two economies and all the other economies in the whole world for this product. And in market A, there's an equilibrium price. And we're going to give that price a special name. We've never used it before. I'm going to call it the autarky price. Autarky is a condition in which there's no trade. This is the default setting. Autarky. Country B also has an autarky price. And their prices don't have to be equal to each other. And in the world... When all the countries combine in a giant market, there's also a world price. Now, some assumptions we've made here in this market. I've assumed that there's one world price instead of lots of different country prices. And I've assumed, I'm going to assume that there's free trade and that it's costless to transport our goods and all that. It's a starting point. It won't be perfect, but if you want to become a trade economist, there's a lot more you can do. So there is that. Now, let's consider how the world price compares to the price in country A and B. If you drag this price over, we see that it's higher than country A's price, and we see that it's lower than country B's price. And that, we're going to find, is going to make all the difference between whether a country is importing or exporting. Let's start in country A. In country A, now let's consider this world price for a minute. If you're a seller in this market, you have two options. You can sell to your local economy for the autarky price, or you can sell to the rest of the world for the world price. Well, the world price is higher. So you have economic incentives to sell to everyone else. Buyers aren't gonna be able to pay the autarky price because firms are gonna be selling at the world price. The world price is gonna dominate this market. And so for our buyers, here's the quantity demanded. It's where the world price meets the demand curve. And for our sellers, here's the quantity supplied. It's where the world price meets our supply curve. And what it means is that our sellers are selling a high quantity of the good. Our demanders are only buying a small quantity of the good. And the gap between them is called exports. You see, the sellers are selling a high quantity of the good. And the buyers are buying a small quantity of the good. Now, I know this looks like a surplus when there's a greater quantity supply than quantity demanded. But with trade, there's no reason they can't both get their quantity. Sellers can sell more by selling foreign. And consumers can buy less. And so the gap between quantity supplied and quantity demanded is their export. This is an export market, whenever the world price is above the autarky price. Now to put a concrete, well not a concrete, to put a little example on here, if the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded had numbers, quantity demand is 100, quantity supplied is 400, your exports would be QS minus QD, would be 400 minus 100, that'd be 300. Now in market B, facing the same world price, but their autarky price is higher. It's more expensive to buy this good in the local market than it is to buy it on the foreign market. Consumers are going to buy foreign products because they're cheaper. And producers who now have to compete with this lower price are going to have to sell at lower prices. Keep in mind, we do have assumptions. I forgot to mention earlier, this is a perfectly competitive market. We're assuming an identical product. If you start to get into arguments about one country's product being better than another, it starts to throw in some more kinks in this model. 
but it's still a good starting point. So the quantity supplied is there. That's where the world price meets the supply curve. The quantity demanded is there. It's where the world price meets the demand curve. The gap between them looks like a shortage, but it's not because we have trade, is how much we're importing. When your world price is below your autarky price, you have an import market. How much are we importing? Well, it depends on the numbers we plug in, but I could say that the, the quantity supplied was 150, the quantity demanded was 650, imports would be QD minus QS, would be 650 minus 150, would be 500. And so that's kind of the import export market in a nutshell. Uh, it all depends on whether the world price is above or below your autarky price. The world price is determined outside of the control of either of these of either of these countries. Now let's talk a little bit about consumer and producer surplus. Consumer surplus, don't forget, is everything below the demand curve above the price, and it measures excess willingness to pay. I'm going to shade consumer surplus in red, put a label up here, consumer surplus, and I'm gonna highlight producer surplus in blue. You guys, I cannot talk and type, it's pathetic. When I look at this import market, everything below the demand curve and above the price is consumer surplus. If there were no trade, all of that would be consumer surplus. But with trade, the price is higher than PA. The price is up at PW. And so only this space is consumer surplus, low demand, above price. Consumer surplus in the importing market started here in autarky with just that triangle. But with world trade, when the price gets lower, also picks up this. Now check that out. We've never seen that before. This space, this triangle that's blinking right now, that was not part of the original surplus at all. That is surplus beyond what the original market was capable of producing. We call that a gain from trade. Now, what about producer surplus? Well, in the export market, producer surplus, it would have started as just being this area. But when we add trade in, producers start selling more stuff at higher prices. And all of this becomes producer surplus. Now, a couple of pieces to point out. One is that these two used to be consumer surplus, but they were transferred to the producer. And this was beyond the surplus of that market. There is also a gain from trade here because the market has more surplus than it could have originally. And then in the Im import market, uh, there's your producer surplus below the price above the supply curve. Note this used to be producer surplus, but it's not now. The world price transfers that surplus to the consumers. Whether you're importing or exporting, there are gains from trade. But it's very important to point out that if you're exporting, consumers lose. It's also very important to realize, though, that producers gain more than what consumers lose. The total effect is positive. There's more surplus in the market, but there is a transfer going on, and not everyone wins from it. Similar arguments in the import market, producers lose because they lose business and sell at lower prices, but the consumers are going to gain more. Now, I think that's a pretty good starting point for us here. Now, in my next video, I'm going to talk about various trade protection policies and what they do to this market. The result's gonna be that they reduce the gains from trade. They create losses overall, but they can help protect certain people in our market. Because although the trade benefits each country, it doesn't necessarily benefit everyone in each country. I guess we'll get to that next time. But thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. I hope this helps. Happy econing.